listening to the Lone Star Play podcast with your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Okay, welcome to the Lone Star Play podcast. I'm your host, Patrick. You just heard Bob Schneider introduce us on our brand new intro. So thank you to Bob again. I promise I'll stop talking about that, uh, but it just happened. We're just a few episodes in with our brand new intros. So thank you to Austin legend, Bob Schneider for that. Um, We have a great episode today. We have been wanting to do an episode on UFOs, UAPs, I don't know, flying discs, flying saucers, whatever you want to call them. Um, You may have had an experience. You may not have. You might think it's kooky. You might think it's great. Are we on the cusp, right, of hearing uh, something revolutionary that would absolutely change humanity? I don't know. So I went down what I would consider a rabbit hole. Um, and I brought someone on today that's going to hopefully help us maybe answer some questions, maybe ponder more questions upon questions, right, uh, at the end of the day. Um, I feel like the more doors you open, the more doors get revealed in this, uh, you know, topic, uh, which is great and frustrating all at the same time. So let's dive in. My guest today is uh, UFO Jane. That's what uh, she's called. I saw her on the news. I reached out to Nick Pope. Um, He's a very famous uh, person in the UFO community. Please Google him. We'll put a link in the description so you can check out more about him. And he also suggested uh, UFO Jane. Um, She's got a lot of credibility. I've seen her on a bunch of interviews on YouTube when I went to research this. Uh, She's talking to anybody and everybody about this stuff. So uh, that's the truth. I swear. better and worse. (laughs) Like I literally was watching interviews. I was like, you're popping up everywhere. I was like, wow, how how have I not seen you before? How have I not seen these? Again, I've, I've stayed on the surface. So we're going to dive in. So yes, without further ado, uh, UFO Jane, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. This is a blast. I love, I mean, like you said, sure, I go and I do interviews with folks, but really most of the time it's a UFO show or a UFO podcast and everybody already knows everything. And so I actually think it's a, a lot of fun and refreshing to talk to somebody who's not normally reporting on this or has an audience, right? That's Absolutely. Not necessarily in the know. So happy to be here. Awesome. Hey, that's a great point, by the way, right? Like you, you just like any topic, right? When you're talking to the same people that everyone knows the same stuff, you, you discuss mm-hmm. different things. It's just natural. Yes, but when right. you're talking to somebody like me, who's first of all, not very intelligent and also <laughs> doesn't know very much about this, we're, we're going to open some new doors. Probably. You've never I, I have a feeling you, you're, you're pretty savvy and a quick learner and, and you're probably going to be throwing some, I feel like you're going to be throwing out some obscure reference that references <laughs> that even I might have some trouble with. I have a feeling. So bring it though. in, in 1632. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I'm don't, don't give me dates. No. Don't yeah. give me dates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible with dates. No, no, yeah. no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, so, um, okay, so look, um, yes, you know, again, um, when I wanted to do this episode originally, I had a, had a singular plan on it, and I wanted to focus on Texas sightings. Texas is number four ranked in the number of sightings in the United States. Uh, it's a, it's a, although it's the second largest state, um, we have a lot of sightings here. Obviously, it's a big state. There's a lot of people, mm-hmm. and, and honestly, I had interviewed somebody as well who had never reported their sighting. And that was going to be a big part of this episode because how many sightings actually go unreported? I would say the majority of them. So, yeah. right. So it's like who, you know, there's probably so many more than we actually know about. Um, it's like a, you know, whatever. So, mm-hmm. but as I dove into this topic, I just realized there's so much more to it because I didn't want to present things to the audience that I didn't know for sure if they were true or not. And as I dove in, I started to realize, wait, wait a second, what's happening? Is this person really who is this? Is this person who is the, they're saying? And is this really what, you know, the government's doing? And is this, you mm-hmm. know, where the money's going? And what's going on right now? Because for someone to come in new, fresh set of eyes, I haven't been sold a, a product yet, sure. if, if you will, right? So I'm, yeah. I got a fresh set of eyes. I'm going to see the wrinkles mm-hmm. in the dry cleaning. Yes, I love it. Right? Uh-huh. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. I, I jumped in and really what got me going was this, um, and we're going to put a, we're going to make sure we put links in the, in the description for this episode, of course, because there's going to be a lot of them. Uh, so this is my first link drop right here. Uh, New York Post, there's a show called The Basement Office. 
uh, Stephen Green Street is a reporter uh, based out of New York, I believe, um, or at least Northeast, somewhere up there. And uh, he's made this great, um, with Nick Pope, actually, they, they, they initially made this like season one, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, about 18 months ago, I would say was the last episode, about 10 episodes long, more or less, probably a few more videos, right? Different cuts or whatever, but explaining pretty good up to this point, you know, maybe more popular sightings, what's happened with, uh, you know, these popular terms, ATIP, OSAP, right? Lou Elizondo. So mm -hmm. these names you've heard of the news, New York Times. Okay, what's happening? U UFO hearing, congressional report. Wait, what? What's all this stuff? But then Stephen Greenstreet drops this bombshell this month about that that's kind of was all a lie in some sense. So like, what foundation are we building this conversation off of? Right. So I guess that's where I want to start. First of all, what did you think about that video? So you're going to kill me, but I haven't seen Stephen Greenstreet's latest episode of The Basement Office. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm fainting, Jane. And, and, I, and I love and I and I know Stephen. I've interviewed him. I've, I've he's come on another show I, I've done. And so I, I know I know Steve. Stephen well and I am a fan generally of the direction he's going in with everything and we've talked in depth and it's on a long list of playlist of videos that I, I started it so I started it I was getting into it there was like a little rap and I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember I think my kid interrupted me and so I would say that's probably one of my biggest complaints is I increasingly can't keep up with the uh, UFO news and all the leaks and all the information and all the acronyms are, are, uh, there's too many, essentially that that's my hot take is there's too many acronyms. That makes and me how, feel better if I'm being honest. And how because... is, um, if, if I like, I've been looking into UFOs for over a decade now. Right. And if I'm, having trouble making sense of Correct. what's going on how is somebody new new to this world so there has been somewhat of a conscientious decision on my part because we do have all this amazing fresh blood like steven um and some other voices too totally completely disagree with him we're on a completely different side of things who i also think are saying some really great stuff uh, sure. we have so many people in this community that in my opinion are on that beat day to day and they're looking up every leak in there and so i actually used to do that a little more i used to focus on the national stories a little more and and try to dig up what i could and what i believe it or not it's funny the direction you're going with your story have actually pivoted to wanting to focus more on what's going on here in Texas. So to some extent, I've gotten so frustrated, so frustrated with how political it's all become. Sure. And a lot and also seeing a lot of my friends on if people do want to get, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't go to this hashtag if you want to learn about you. <laughs> maybe this is a hashtag to mute. <laughs> if you want to learn about ufos but ufo twitter uh that whole world essentially so seeing friends bicker with each other about oh well you know how long was lou elizondo you know for, former uh counterintelligence agent and current leading disclosure advocate for the government who's now uh, apparently consulting uh, the space force right on on the phenomenon right like you know how long was he really involved and what are his intentions and is he good or bad and and you can have that same argument with every single voice that comes out and tries to be credible about this i mean nobody's going to have that argument about me because i don't have as much influence <laughs> as well as Zondo, but if you gave me that much influence people would be arguing about me, right? Um, the same argument happened. So for, you know, Stephen, I, as I believe he was kind of like you a little bit newer to the new wish compared to some folks, right? Who were, yeah. you know, in, in this for, I mean, I think we've got books that were written, you know, around the forties, right? Roswell time to today. So there's a big history here, right? That Stephen's, you know, I'm kind of new to Stephen's a little newer to, um, uh, but yeah, I can't, where was I going with that? Um, 
But yo, yeah. But so before Lil Zondo, it was Jeremy Corbell. Oh, is he good or bad? Or who's put him up to this? Or and then before that, it was Tom DeLonge. Well, Tom DeLonge's the hero of Disclosure, but he's just a rock star. Why do you trust him? And so it's just it's the same argument. It's it's a waste of time, in my opinion. It has, and I don't mean that watching the ba- the latest Basement Office is a waste of time. Course, For me, as an investigator, I have found it to be a waste of time to try to learn all this stuff. I feel that it's a waste of time from learning about the actual phenomenon, as it were. Um, so I look to okay, let's say the three, the three. You got Tom DeLonge kind of started it out, right? He was to the Stars Academy, you know. Did Joe Rogan? He was talking about some pretty woo woo stuff there. That if you notice, Jeremy Corbell kind of kind of slid in there and became a pretty popular voice went on Joe Rogan with Bob Lazar. He actually reached out to me. We did. I went out to area 51 during the storm area 51 craziness with, oh, with wow. him and accompanied oh. him there. And, um, was part of that, like the counter movement to the storm area 51. And so we could talk about that. It's, it's some great stories there. Wow. Uh, so he tried out to, and then, then Louis, Louis, Lou Elizondo around that time was, making speeches, doing the interview rounds, gaining his fandom, if you will. And so to me, it's like, okay, these people are all really important people doing way more than I ever could, or maybe even would, <laughs> honestly. I don't know that I, I couldn't do as many interviews as Lou has done, right? Uh, we had to reschedule this one, <laughs> for yeah. example. Um, so it's just huge hats off to all these people and everything they've done. But then to the day, it really comes down to the evidence and, and what these UFOs are and if they're real or not. I don't, I think th- there's debate and rumor about what evidence Lou Elizondo behind the scenes has helped to leak. Um, but all, all of these pieces of evidence, you know, none of these, Tom DeLong, Jeremy and Lou, <clears throat> were not the witnesses to any of this evidence we're talking about, right? Um, they're not the ultimate source of truth right there really are and i don't mean this in a condescending way but they really are just another opinion right another uh, uh, and that's great if you trust somebody over another like i think everybody has a right to choose who they want to trust like you're not obligated to trust or be a fan of any particular government or (laughs) non-government personality right that's talking about this and so to me when people are in there on twitter and arguing about you know why are you a fan of this person versus this person or this person should get credit for disclosure over another it's very it's really hard for me not to roll my eyes it's it's really hard for me to keep my that's not why i got into this i'm not curious so much (laughs) about politics and like the behind the scenes drama and gossip and things that lead to something ending up in a national security bill or not right or i didn't i didn't get into this this was something that specifically was not political when i got into ufos they weren't real so all the government voices right now they were not around (laughs) in you know 2012 when i started texas ufo sightings that you know ufos were officially they were not real so there was no, there was nothing, there was no, nothing to debate. There was nothing to get upset about back then. Sure. It was just, I, I was the kooky one, right? And, you know, um, and then give it time, 2017, we have the New York Times stories. Now, all of a sudden, UFOs are real. All of a sudden, this is a topic that your mom's supposed to know about. You're, you're you know, everybody is supposed sure. to have an opinion about it. Now, 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 here we are in 2022. We've got two UFO offices. We have taxpayer money funding the search for the truth, right? And the primary evidence, right, that's being offered up. So I, I say ignore the names. Who cares about the names, right? And I, again, I don't mean that with disrespect. No, no. Let's just ignore the names. You know, we've got the three Pentagon UFO videos that were l- released in 2017. We have the the triangle uh, video and uh, the splash video. It, it sounds, sounds like you're following along. <laughs> this is pretty meta. I don't know how your audience is doing. But we have essentially this series of video evidence that is being offered up as possible proof, right, of 
alien visitation, right? Extraterrestrial visitation. So not being offered up as proof of foreign tech or, you know, potentially unknown rogue private tech. That's a huge, extraordinary claim with tremendous implication. It's powerful. And I will say from my perspective as a researcher of all of the official evidence, right, that has come forth, uh, the the video that was shown in the recent uh, UFO hearing, it's all really interesting. Um, it could it be extraterrestrial, maybe, um, but they all leave something to be desired. None of those pieces of evidence are definitive to me. I've seen similarly compelling, if not more compelling evidence over the decade I've been reporting from just civilians, right, on the ground, just, you know, average folks that have no agenda, right? So, and nobody was ever telling me that I was proving that ET, I never got credit, you know, for proving, you know, that ETs are visiting. So I, and I agree, I don't <laughs> think I should. I don't think I've come across that evidence personally. I haven't. I haven't shaken the hands of the gray alien yet. I haven't been sent a video of that clear, detailed spacecraft that's not CGI. Um, one time I thought maybe I had it. It did, did turn out to be Fake. A, a hoax. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but we were able to prove that, right? So long, long story short, I'm not as so much interested right now and who's saying what or how they're saying it or who they're saying it to (laughs) or what company or group or acronym they worked for at one point. I really would like to laser focus what is the evidence that you have that the anomalous lights, objects that are flying around are not, you know, are foreign tech or I guess potential you know, space clutter, natural phenomenon, but the evidence lately has been clearly intelligent um, craft. So it's yeah. really, is it alien or is it us? And unfortunately, we, you, we really are pushing the government into a corner with this though, because if at any point, like they, they say UFOs are real, then we have to look back through all the history. And so uh, of UFO sightings, sure. right? And so... I would a really great one I want to bring up, and this again, this is why I want to focus on the evidence and actually whether this is real or not, because it's a big deal if it's real, and it may not be such a friendly, happy thing either. <laughs> um, you know, one of the most famous cases here um, in Texas was East Texas was in the '80s, and it's called the Cash Landrum incident. So if you guys want to go down the rabbit hole. If I said a lot of things that were confusing to you so far, just you know, go look up the Cash Landrum incident. And this was a very clearly documented case of um, is uh, two women and one of the women's grandchildren, little small child, they were driving in the car in the piney woods in East Texas, like perfectly spooky setting. Wow. And yeah. uh, they see a, a tri- well, diamond shaped craft, like a triangle with the top cut off just hovering there in the sky and so they get out they part pull over and they get out of the car and they're slapped with intense heat so um and it actually left marks on their car um helicopters uh we were the little boy actually counted them up i think it was like 32 or 33 um cash landrum 33 helicopters i think that were swarming around them get back in the car. Uh, But they ended up having essentially what we can guess might have been radiation symptoms, right? So this is, look, this is just one of many, many historic cases that I refuse to forget about while we look at this new wave of evidence, right? Because what we can conclude then is one of two things, right? This was indeed an alien spacecraft and this cover-up goes back you know for years and um we've got to get to the bottom of that right or um this wasn't an alien spacecraft and our own government or a foreign government has been toting around these craft and we've been seeing strange things and it's even had negative effects you know on our own citizens and those are the only two possibilities to me so I'm going to be, you know, so for all, you know, so for everything that they, they, meaning the government, you know, these official sources that we trust in, in hearings and we're paying, you know, our taxes, right? Um, 
I'm going to need to see something that's definitively extraterrestrial. And I don't know that I've seen that yet. We hear about what makes something extraterrestrial. We're hearing about the testimony and the, the things behind the scenes that happen, right? Or the audio that is not being captured, right? I, I've talked to um, Gary Voorhees, one of the witnesses to the Tic Tac UFO. Um, also, Alex Dietrich, too. I've talked to her. I really trust them. I think they're telling the truth. I don't think they're lying. They they saw something weird. I think all the witnesses are telling the truth. I think people have been seeing weird things ever since Roswell and before. Um, but we cannot just ignore the history. It would be so weird. Like, let's say you wanted to learn about anything for the first time to be like, oh, I'm just going to start from scratch and I'm going to ignore all yeah. the history. Sure. Is um, that that's for me where I'm finding myself a little frustrated I guess, uh, and why I do kind of c consciously tune out some of that, um, and then I'll, I'll go spin you. it, and I'll go and I'll report, I'll go and I'll look at an actual UFO video, and that is more satisfying to me because I feel like, oh, wow, I'm actually making progress here. I'm learning about what is what this is, what this phenomenon is because I, I do think it's real. Um, if people are wondering, I, d I do think UFOs are real. <laughs> if I sound skeptical. Um, I, no, I'm, no, a no, no. I'm a believer, you know, that there's yeah, something yeah. going on. So I you're, you're a believer, <laughs> you're a believer that something's flying around and, but you're not saying it's aliens yet. You don't think yet, there's I'm any not evidence saying, period. Uh, right I mean, not yet. Now, no smoking gun. In the modern, in modern day reports, no smoking gun. Now, if the smoking gun is popping up and, um, I used to keep up with international stories a lot more. It's getting, you know, pushed back down. It's getting covered up real fast. I do think that's possible, more possible than people realize, especially when you're talking about um, sightings, maybe in other countries where you have a, a foreign language barrier. Um, it's amazing the media blackout. So it's not, I wouldn't say that there's, there could be things happening, um, but they're not happening in Texas. That's what I would say. I don't think they're happening in Texas or it's, it's very locked down. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, it's not getting to my desk. If that makes sense, it's, sure. it's getting locked down before it's ever making it yeah. to a desk like mine. Now, however, when you look at the totality of the UFO phenomenon, you look at the history, it's changed. It's not the same today that it used to be. They're used to, it appears. I mean, I wish I could, I mean, I, I, maybe it's a good thing. I can't go back in time, you know, to 19, you know, 47 Roswell and, and be there and, and really know for sure what happened that day. Uh, but from the reporting I have done, you know, independently, you know, here in Texas, looking at reports in the 50s and 40s and 60s, the flying saucers were prevalent, like very prevalent, showing up all around uh, the country. I mean, not just in Texas, right? Um, and before then there were the big cigar ships. There were huge unidentified airships that were flying around the country in the late 1800s. One reportedly crashed in 1897, just outside the Dallas area. Uh, as with any of these things, you can find a, a paper trail of people saying it's a hoax, but you can't, can't prove any of that. Um, they're just... Sure. They're just claims. Uh, but we know the airships did happen. We know that they were seen. In fact, Thomas Edison was accused of building them. So for uh, me to ignore all of this history with UFOs would be to would be so counterintuitive, would be to betray my own logical reasoning. And sure. so what I, I think is that UFOs changed. I think uh, there there were the the saucers, the standard saucers, and with the airships, people encountered entities or humanoids that would claim to like be from Mars or things like that. Uh, but there's no that could have been a person though, just saying that they were from Mars. There was this. Uh, it's called. Again, this one's not verified. It's not an official thing. You can look up on FBI.gov or CIA.gov yet. Uh, but there was this rumored aero club, Sonoro Aero Club in the late 1800s. And it had all these designs of these like different ships. And some of them looked like 
you know, the ones that were being seen. So, you know, my, my theory right now is there was a group of human beings that were designing chips ahead of, you know, ahead of the blimps and ahead of uh, what eventually, you know, ended up taking over. And that there's probably been a theme of that ever since. I mean, think about drones, right? Um, they are such a pain in the butt for ufologists. And that's kind of what we're getting to here with the modern day UFO phenomenon. Almost all of the amazing UFO videos that, and they're real, they're not made up. People are really seeing weird things in the sky and filming it. But advanced drones, like military drones, <clears throat> are crazy advanced. They can go like, you know, over 15,000 feet high. They, you know, so high that you're not hearing them, right? They can yeah. have these lights on them that are so bright that they, you know, you don't see the navigation lights, right? So they really do look like a mysterious ball of light. You know, they can hover, they can go extremely fast. Um, and this is modern day advanced drones. Now, do I guess that these drones are everywhere and explain every sighting? No, but let's say this, if I was an alien and I was visiting, I'm pro it's really easy to blend in, right? So if, you know, if the aliens are real and they're That's visiting, That's right? Because, because we can- I don't know how much they would want to like blend in. I don't know if that would be on their mind, right? Like, let me blend in. I think in. that's- I think that's the only way you're visiting is blending in. I don't think you're you're. I have my own in. theories on. Well, I do want to get into theory. that. We could talk. Yeah, 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 I do, I do, I do. I want to save yeah. it for the end because I heard you say something that I'm yeah. I'm I'm probably gonna piggyback on something you said in an interview. You may have not even realized you said, but I heard something you said, and I was like, I that's what I think. Yeah, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a second. But I, I, I want you to finish yeah, your thought. I, love I want it. you to finish your thought. Yeah. So it's increasingly easier to blend in with our advanced tech. So right, like look at Elon Musk's like Starlink, you know, satellite train, and just how dazzling and incredible that looks. Right today, oh, that's Elon Musk Starlink train. That doesn't have to be anything, you know, alien. Right. So it's easy to write off, check off. But well, then how do you explain the 1950? one or was it two Lubbock lights, which looked very similar as V-shaped lights, you know, just traveling in the sky. Professors saw it. They got a, uh, there was a photo taken of it by a student. Um, so back then there wasn't, you know, the, the Starlink train, right? So in history, you know, we can go back in history and we can see tech that we definitely didn't have today, right? Whereas right sure. these days, our drones are getting so insane that, I mean, how would you be able to distinguish potentially between an alien craft that's doing crazy stuff up there and a drone? Because it's, you know, it's so fi fi high up, might be past the stratosphere, right? So it it's really easy to blend in in that, that way, right? So I see a change in the type of UFOs that have been seen since the 40s and 50s and, and since, right? And that change coincides with our, our tech, right? So it's, like I said, of, of the official government leak, so far there hasn't been anything that completely defies, you know, explanation sure, sure. that we can be sure isn't, uh, and people will just roast me and, and get really on my case. But the thing is these same people, in the like decade I've been reporting on sightings, none of them have said I've proved that ETs are real. And I can't tell you how many videos I've posted of lights that so, hover and then, you know, disappear and, and reappear and do all these weird things. And so I'm just not convinced it's alien, you know, yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. Look, it's better to be more reserved till we have, right. If, as long as you have an open mind, I don't know. You give me a flying saucer and you, and I can yeah. see a gray alien, you know, through the window. That's a little bit more interesting to me, but those honestly, that's not even, in, they're lost th in history though. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Look, you impact a lot here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to address a lot of some of these yeah, things that you it. said, um, so first of all, um, let, let, let's just start from the, the beginning of what you started to talk about, which was just that, you know, you, you want to focus on the sightings and the evidence and the data. And I respect the hell out of that because that's where I want to be, too. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. But as someone new coming into this, right, we also need a foundation to build off of. Yeah. And if we build this foundation on sand, 
right? We build a house of sand here and the tide's just gonna come up. Well, then how, how do I begin my research, right? Mm -hmm. What data can I trust to look at, sure. right? Because people are out with an agenda providing certain data. So that, yeah. that's where I'm at, right? So it's, it's, it's almost like for someone new, it's almost like I gotta address this over here first, but for someone that's been in it a long time, I get why you're like, I don't even wanna deal with that. I'm over here, which I get it. You're just mm -hmm. more advanced in the, process of this topic it's, advanced, right? it's just like you know, frustrated or lazy I get it. more than advanced I'm, i get it um, i'm frustrated i'm frustrated with it as well because yeah one for years for a couple of years now i've been watching these interviews with uh first of all let me just explain to the audience real quick um uh, what i'm talking about with that new york post video gosh that was so long ago yeah we should uh, provide some more context yeah that's okay <laughs> I, I i wanted you to finish your thought i didn't want to interrupt you, you seem like you had a lot to get off your chest honestly so i just <laughs> want to let you do it um so yeah that video basically you know lou elizondo is um you know someone in the uh, community who worked in the government who said they ran a government program about ufos okay mm -hmm. so i don't want to throw too many acronyms or names right. around for people that don't know this stuff so you can dig deeper and find out but the, you know surface level here so he said he was working for them no problem he's been all over the news right any major news thing he's the guy head of the program whatever um now, this video comes out, Stephen Greenstreet, and he says, well, I don't how much of that is actually true based on a book that came out in October 2021 called Skinwalkers of the Pentagon or something mm -hmm. like that. I, I can't yep. remember, but basically like the real story of where that money went and who was actually running that program before Lou Elizondo even got involved. This gentleman named James Latasky. Oh, my gosh. What, what do I yeah, say? you're doing great. You're is doing great. <laughs> Jane yeah. Lekatsky, yes. Mm -hmm. So he was actually the original one running this program. He actually got the $22 million from the government to run at Skimwalker Ranch uh, with Bass, with this mm -hmm. Bigelow, uh, oh. Robert Bigelow Industries, uh, with mm -hmm. the help of Senator Harry Reid. Yep. Um, and that sort of turns out, maybe that's the truth of what was actually happening. So maybe was Lou actually was that his day-to-day -day job, right? Like nine to five, this is what I'm doing? Or was it like, okay, it's five o'clock, I got 30 minutes, I'm gonna go over here and run a report or check on something, mm -hmm. right? In this five, is it a side activity, right? And even in this video, he provides, call it a side activity, if you will, right? Even Lou says that in his own words, right. like not even a program. Um, and where the name ATIP comes from and OSEP, again, I hate to throw around these acronyms, please mm -hmm. just watch this video and, and, and figure that out. But again, whether or not you think Lou Elizondo is doing, if he really is who he says he was, does it really matter, right? Mm -hmm. did, did, did what he do bring attention to uh, the topic and that in and of itself is fine, sort of like, let's just, you know, the ends justify the means. And, and to be honest with you, the more I dig into this and the more I see the, the Stephen Greenstreet interviews that he did about the video and actually the one you were in too, I watched that whole thing. It was like two hours or something mm -hmm. uh, before the video came out. Oh yeah, and that said, was I intense. Want you to, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I watched another one he did after the video came out. And I gotta say, that guy, and Steven, if you see this, man, I can relate to you. I, a lot of things that guy said, just I, I related to getting in the inside circle, hearing these things you didn't want to hear, like, whoa, whoa, I thought it was this, it, but it turned out to be mm -hmm. this. He, he mentioned his journey with religion. I had the same thing with religion right. when I was 18. I became a First Baptist. Uh, you know, I got baptized and for a few years I was all in on God. But then I realized, wait a sec, I had these questions and they weren't answered and they were, yeah. it was all different. And it was like, wait, wait, I'm on the inside circle and I'm hearing things that scared me. Well, we're not saying this to the public. Why are we saying this back here? Yeah. Right? We're, we're, it's not real. It became like, this is a facade. This isn't real. We have an agenda. And when Steven started to say that stuff, the interview, I got it. It hit me. I was like, dude, I I'm totally get it. You're there. You think it's about the data, UFO sightings, right. real shit. You believed what they told you, but it turns out they're withholding, withholding information when mm -hmm. they feel it's necessary, right? Telling you what they think you need to know to move along the topic in the way they feel it needs to move along, uh, whether or not you agree with it or not, um, and whether or not it's right or not. Maybe they're right, maybe they're not, sure. right? Sure, yeah. But 
the more he was just so like, whoa, whoa, I'm not down for that. I didn't sign up for that, right? I, I signed up for this over here, and I'm happy to do that, but don't filter stories through me. Quick transparency, I reached out to Lou Elizondo. Yeah. And I, and I spoke to Dan Farah, I think is his name. Um, he is a publisher for, for Lou Elizondo. Mm -hmm. And they said they're not doing any more interviews he recently. just stopped yeah uh -huh. he just stopped he just yeah. said i'm not done mm -hmm. doing any more interviews and i yeah. get it i also saw this text he sent calling these reporters like combat you know where i watch out for these felons and they're spreading lies and See, you're you're in it man <laughs> listen i'm in so it let me tell it. you yeah. something and i thought wait a second lou this doesn't look good for you dude like i don't know you right like i don't know you like these people do so i'm just seeing Look, there's an old saying, and Lou, if he's watching this, you know, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. So Lou's telling everyone who he really is. You got to believe him. So this behind the scenes, that, that, that's not good stuff, man. That, that's not some, for, uh, yeah, I do a lot of interviews. I've been in, I, I, I'm really good at reading people. And there's a lot of deception coming off that guy that I felt personally from a lot of interviews he's done for, for a long time, um, using honestly very basic, almost deceptive tactics, which is kind of odd coming from someone that I thought was of his stature. But I played it off too well. He's just doing a lot of interviews, whatever mm -hmm. this happens. But man, I don't know. Now, does it really affect my journey in, in the UFO, you know, topic for me personally? Not really. You know what it makes me do? Kind of take your attitude. You know what? Forget all this. Forget Lou. Forget this. I'm done with you. You know, do what you want, man. This is where I'm focused. This is what I'm going to look into. This is yeah. who I'm going to listen to. You know, the people that I feel that are just being genuine and having open, honest conversations. And honestly, they're more creators. They're more podcasters, right? These, people, these yeah. are people that really care. That's a good point. And it bothers me that Lou and people like him will take advantage of people um, like this. Mm -hmm. who want to do the right thing, want to send the right message, want to support, and they get taken advantage of. And I don't like that. And that's, that's, me choca esto. And Lou, you speak Spanish. Yo también soy mexicano. Me choca eso. That's not a good thing to do because, it, again, you break the trust like that, but now I can't really believe what you're pushing to people, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to focus over here on these people that are having more genuine conversations and really care. And yeah. that, that's where I'm finding my heart going. And mm -hmm. I think Steven said it right, where he said, you know what? Just the first episode is this. Now we're moving on to the stuff. Let's yeah. get down into the history. Like yeah, you yeah. said, the mm -hmm. history, the real stuff. We can't forget about that. Where did yeah. this all start? Did we build this? Was this a house of cards that got built? Mm -hmm. Or let's focus on the real history, right? And, and really look at this and what's coming forward. And I'm with you. I want to mm -hmm. go down, you know, that journey too. So that's my spiel. Yeah. I got it out of my oh, I, system. I, no, I, I, I love it. I love that your eyes open about this. And that's just what I remind people is like, be eyes open. You know, like yeah. wake up people. Um, people are people too. Even the nicest person can be misled too. Like, let's, so let's say um, Absolutely. it's shmoo meli pondo or something and he's a new uh voice of the people and we all trust him but that doesn't necessarily mean he's right about this i mean sure. there's no i don't think there's any human being who we can say is his figure this out you know the answers about the cosmos and stuff so it's very much something yeah. that we all get to have our own opinion about and we don't have to feel guilty about it if we have a different opinion than like some voice who i will say though and again i um I believe these people have motivations. Okay, let's just say that. Um, but I will say as a contrast, um, one thing I really like about Jeremy Corbell. Yes, Jeremy Corbell. It, We're gonna put a link to his too, it, because the, he is. Yeah. And I, and I say just, I, I say I do believe people have motivations. Um, I don't think that, uh, I think the triangle video that he released may not be extraterrestrial. So I'm not coming at this as you know, just blindly go in and follow people. But I will say I have not seen any kind of drama get started 
by that person. Weird gossip gets started by that person. I recently yeah. saw a thread where um, another friend, somebody I really like, John Greenwald of the Black Vault, was critiquing something he said and he replied in the thread and was like, maybe we could talk about it on the phone. So I don't know where that That's went. Cool. I, I don't know where that I like ended that. Up I respect and, that. And I haven't, and just in all this time, I've, I haven't seen anything funky or friends being mistreated or talked about or gossiped about from him for what that's worth so um but that's also, awesome i like that know, guy so to be honest i think that's something that people should keep keep in mind you know absolutely um, look there's no need to cause any drama there's no need yeah. to have agendas there's no need to just be transparent <laughs> let's all yeah. talk we all want the same thing Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what the, what are we doing here? Yeah, it's it's very, very, it's very silly. And before all of, before this dog and pony show, if you will, before it was such a political <laughs> yeah. thing, um, you really could talk about this openly and you could have whatever weird opinion you have. You could be like, is the government planning a fake alien invasion? And you wouldn't get canceled for it. Like you could have like these conversations and you could get into it and it wouldn't turn into a, a personal argument you wouldn't get accused of calling witnesses liars because now what happens is if you say any of the evidence that's been presented if you're not personally convinced it's alien or you're just you just want more information that's how i feel i just want more information i guess i'm not kind of on the fence with it you get then accused of calling the witnesses liars right or or uh, and so that's where it gets so personal now because Correct. what what's happening though and it it's fair though because what's happening is is <clears throat> we're all trying to convince each other what we want reality to be in the next decade or so right so let's say you have great way to put that ever... Jane. great way to put so, that and and we're we'll all, are, are all gonna have to pay the consequences of that and some people don't want to live in a world where there's aliens and some people sure. do and i kind of just want to want to know what it is and not really attach myself to either uh but the thing is it's it's actually outside of what the truth is so that's something ne people need to remember that we can all agree on what a truth is together and that can be called disclosure but it may never actually be it may be really far from the truth right but sure. we might all be satisfied and say hey disclosure's done you know we did it and we proved aliens right because yeah. there's microbes on mars and maybe we just accept um some of these anomalous lights or something like that. It could be as simple and subtle as that, right? Or it could be some mass, you know, sighting that, you know, local town films and we just all agree, right? But what what if it wasn't <laughs> when we just, so I think disclosure has a lot yeah. more to do just what we all collectively want to agree to than sure. what necessarily is the actual truth. And so that can be a burden. <laughs> Because there's so really, many yeah. pockets uh, in the community, right? Yes, so many. And they don't all talk. That's my problem when I got into mm -hmm. this. I was like, wait a second. I searched Jeremy Corbell, Lou Elizondo interview. I thought, wait, they've never done no, an interview right? together? No, right? I thought, wait a second, what's going on? Does one not believe the other? Mm -hmm. Is something happening? And then I thought, oh, Christopher Mellon. Wait, let's hear what he has to say about Bob Lazar. Wait, what? Okay, this is different. Well, but okay, so Jeremy Corbell and Bob Lazaro hang out, right, with Joe Rogan, then Christopher right. Mellon and Lou Elizondo and Tom DeLong will hang out, but Tom DeLong will say nice things about Bob Lazaro. Wait, mm -hmm. what's happening here? Uh, who how, believes who? How about this? You want to you want to really uh, for a trip of how this really started for for me or not? I was reporting on UFOs before, but kind of before the, the um, one of my first interviews I did for YouTube, Tom DeLong posted a photo on his Instagram of a, of a UFO, of a disc. I recognized it. There was no like caption or information. It was a Billy, it was from Billy Meyer. It was one of the Billy Meyer hoax photographs. I oh, mean, maybe no. it's not a hoax or not, but it's sure. even in the community, it's been, been, uh, like that's not considered credible evidence. Uh, okay. I see and he, he started out um, with that photo on Instagram. That was one of his very early posts. I did a video about it. And then the representative Michael Horn, I'm sorry, the re representative Billy Meyer, Michael Horn reached out to me. We did like a two part interview and Michael oh, Horn wow. had, and that's where I got introduced to like the idea of the Pleiades. And I mean, we're talking, yeah aliens are here kind of interview it was it was that it was what he was trying to convince me of but that 
so we started out on just a vague out of context billy meyer hoaxed you know photo of a saucer from tom DeLong, and and now wow. we're here right wow. to you know apparently officially you know leaked pentagon videos so it, yes it makes you wonder who's talking to who and who believes what case and it it's it's so there's so many tentacle or whatever whatever ten, tentacles? tentacles tentacles yeah that's tentacles. right yeah yeah you said it right tentacles it right. Yeah. there's there's so <laughs> many um different path paths you can go down and so yeah it does sometimes it is about picking your battles right and so that's why i worry oh my gosh people are gonna get who are totally new to this who don't who don't know that there were airships flying around before the blimps they don't know that there were multiple saucer landings like all sure. over the world in waco texas um in the 50s yeah 50s we had towers that were to observe flying saucers because they wow. were so prevalent and this holy was, cow really in the waco tribune i also had <laughs> wow. i had somebody reach out wow. who was in the air force at the time and saw them hovering in formation so that wow there is so much to this that how is anybody ever going to get there right if they're just yeah. trying to figure out the acronym and and <laughs> how to what it stands for yeah yeah totally. it's very it's very much a it just kind of stops you in your tracks and ultimately right. we're back to learning about humans and their motivations sure. rather than sure. that's the but, problem but it All goes right. hand in hand doesn't it <laughs> that's the problem you know yeah. steven said it best it's like look um he said, um, look, uh, ju just because this religion is proven, whatever, doesn't mean God doesn't exist, right? So just right. because these people are out here as bad actors or bad faith, and honestly, it's really hard to know that unless you know someone's heart, and that's impossible. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's all speculation and probability, right? And just mm -hmm. your, your instinct and gut that you go off of, of just Pretty human much. nature, right? So then that's fine. That's what we do. I, tr I trust mine. So mm -hmm. no problem. But that doesn't mean that there's not things flying around that we don't of know course. what they are, right? You can ha you can believe both, and I think that's okay, right? It's okay to say, you know what, this isn't. I don't think this is real, but I still think there could be something flying mm -hmm. around, right? Doesn't mean I'm saying this person's a liar, or this, that, or the other, or whatever. Um, you know, just to sort of defend that, I don't think mm -hmm. there's anything wrong with um, questioning. Uh, I'm not saying be a true, you know, you know never Skeptic believe anything or, yeah. either mm -hmm. yeah skepticism is a tricky thing because i'm all Cynicism, about being skeptical. yeah i'm all about being skeptical but at the same time people can be too skeptical they won't even mm -hmm. accept a truth right in front of them you yeah. know it's a tough it's a balancing act right it's mm -hmm. like i'm willing to go <laughs> on this journey with you but i need you to guarantee me a seat meaning yeah. like I, I need to make sure that you know we're not just going to be flying around, you know, just some crazy thing. Mm -hmm. Like th this is a, this is, let's do this. Let's, I'm willing to go down and say there, there's p p potentially, you know, life outside of our planet coming and visiting mm -hmm. us, has come and visited us, is coming all the time, whatever, however yeah. you want to put it, right? All the different scenarios. If I'm, if I'm willing to go there, but let's, 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 let's be, let's be, you know, logical to, to right. the extent we can be about it so that we're, so that it, it's real right so that mm -hmm. we're not basing all this on crap like i don't i think people that are that lie about a sighting lie about a uh an abduction lie about anything to do with it anybody that does that to me that is so damaging to mm -hmm. the cause mm -hmm. way more than anything i could think of is is yeah. a is someone it is going out of their way right like to to because you think you're oh well let me help i'll add to the site no you're not mm -hmm. helping you're not yeah. helping at all. Like we need to focus on the real ones because now we're spending energy on things. You know, I hear the Travis Walton fire in yeah. the sky. I remember seeing that movie when I was 13 years old, when it came out in the early nineties and thinking, uh -huh. holy shit, this is the crazy. It's, to me, it's the best movie ever made about mm -hmm. alien abduction, period, hands down. There's nothing better. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that story is intense. And I hear the guy tell it especially i heard him tell it on joe rogan i heard him tell it a few different times i don't know where i stand okay if i'm being honest mm -hmm. my gut says i don't believe the guy but at the same time i don't know 
I, where See, that, am I supposed to? That's an interesting oh. one because his fellow logger saw the the. Crack, I exactly. That's why it's like a. Down. He my brain can't did, get it right. He actually you know? did go missing. I have, the, so I have missing. the same thing yeah, exactly. with my brain. So because I've not seen because i'm not an experiencer because i'm not an abductee it's been a kind of a beautiful thing because it keeps it to where i can be real objective exactly. uh, but i have learned i have tried i am able to okay just accept that these abductions are what they are and then try to view the reality that way but then sure. it's like you have a filter where you can kind of turn off <laughs> the abductions being real and and view it that way but i as i see read more and more of these encounters again unfortunately like having to go back through history don't think yeah. the abduction phenomenon is the same as it used to be i mean that i just don't think it's the same um that's interesting and it that's makes sense why yeah. would it why sure. would it be the same and You're why right. why would the government feel comfortable it, let's say aliens are visiting have been why would they feel comfortable about coming out about that if there were peak abductions and all this stuff sure. happening it like probably, we can't do anything about it sorry yeah, they're coming and abducting would, you <laughs> maybe this is a quiet time maybe there's if we really want to get really theoretical and it's pure theory because i don't sure. have any evidence is um well i mean i tend to think how do we treat uh us as human beings on our own planet earth how do we treat um not only animals, right, uh, that are we want to preserve, right, or are, like or endangered or things like that, um, but also um, isolated tribes. So there's multiple instances of different tribes in different parts of the world, not just in one place. Uh, so a variety of where we as um, a group of people have decided, like, what are we going to do about this? Oh, we don't want to contact them, or we do, or we want to stop the loggers that are going in there, or, or whatever. And we've had these situations of contact. You can go and like watch documentaries about it, and it's really amazing. Um, there's one video where you you see a tribe interacting with um, somebody with a cigarette, and they're just like, it looks like. I mean, think of how crazy that would look to sure. you if you've never seen a cigarette Absolutely. before. Um, and so I think, okay. Well, maybe there is some galactic group of aliens out there and they just kind of collectively agree to like they're they're trying to check us out and study us, but they don't really want to be make themselves known to us right now. They want to engage start some kind of fight because it actually does happen on Earth between sure. um well, I mean, between people in general, different groups in general, but there is that effect of the new newcomer and um, and the fight happening right. essentially because of misunderstanding. So I think, well, maybe maybe there's been some. That's what Stephen agree Hawking said. Agreement right? reached, uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> and they're kind of quiet now, and so maybe now is a good time to start introducing this idea when you know maybe people aren't actively being as abducted as much and they're not going to go see that huge flying saucer with the gray alien in it yet it's kind of these digestible lights right and then and, and another thing i think is man if i'm i'm doing if i'm on some one of these secret boards I'm not, guys. Trust me. Uh, I have no top secret clearance whatsoever. That's what somebody on a secret board would <laughs> right. say, though, Jane. I, I have not saying. signed any. The only NDAs <laughs> I've ever signed are just for, like, TV show things and things like that. That's it. <laughs> um, I have no top secret clearance. Uh, but I think if I was in one of these boardrooms and we had an actual <clears throat> alien, if we had a, a light that we thought was alien, I do not think we're showing that to the general <clears throat> public because that then you're also showing it <clears throat> excuse me excuse me <clears throat> i just muted <laughs> please, myself please, please. Don't um, worry. no 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 please please when i'm doing live streams i'm much better about this but i should be the same <laughs> during, you know during, during <laughs> this uh <laughs> but i i would don't know why you would show that to the yeah. general public you'd show that to your foreign enemies so you're gonna show an object that you don't understand fully. Like, what if it's not even okay to watch this thing on a camera? Sure, <laughs> like, you're, sure. you're, this is alien technology and you're just going to show it to the world. I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Now, maybe, maybe you edit it down or maybe you show something similar. To that's get people. Oh, to that's, I haven't heard that before. 
That's interesting. So you copy the video, you make it intention. close, but I, I get it. You know what that's like? That's like when they take pictures of space and they'll recreate, right? Like, I, I mean, not exactly, but I get yeah. what you're saying. Like maybe they change a few things just to whatever, right? They don't want to reveal certain secrets that we have or something. Maybe and, the, the technology. Yeah. So there could be an agency that's just kind of not tip giving the information because they're kind of okay. This is a safer way to, because it, it just doesn't That's make sense. I mean, really, if, if we have, if really, think about you're the president of the United States and you really have a video of what you think is an alien UFO, you're going to be okay with that being broadcast to the whole world? I just don't think you are. Um, but if you That's have that, if you have that somewhere in your inventory or you're worried you will because maybe something's going to show up or, right? you might start preparing and you might start getting people comfortable with the idea of tech that's more advanced. And then, oh, what do you know alongside? You've got reports of microbes on Mars. And oh, all over here, you've got reports of, oh, we're just digging up older and older cities and and things, right? Like, oh, civilization's older than we think. Oh, there might have been more to our human history. Maybe, sure. maybe we dig up something from the past you know, here, sure. here in the near future. And so I think you'll have this culmination of all these stories together that I, so I do believe, yes, that we are going into some direction of disclosure. I, my hunch is, is that not only is there one alien species out there, but there could be many. I mean, you look at how ubiquitous life is here. I mean, it's everywhere. It's invisible. It's like all around us. We have like you know, bacteria and all kinds of things, you know, all over us, right? So my guess is like, it's probably crazy like that out there. And either way, it's insane, right? If if we truly are that rare with all the, what NASA says, with the number of stars and everything that our own, you know, mainstream scientists say, right? If we truly are that rare right not one time in in any of our history any a advanced life form interacted with us because it only had to happen once for all of the ancient aliens guys right to get credit right it only happens sure. to happen once that's um, true so that that would be totally crazy too and that's that is just as exciting to me to find out that would be amazing to find out That'd absolutely be crazy. um but and then of course the other option okay life could be ubiquitous out there right um and there was a speech that nasa gave a press conference they gave oh when was it um i want to say it was before the new york times story maybe 2016 they were like if life is out there we're gonna find it now and i thought that was the wildest logical deduction and to if, me it's like you guys we'll just you know the life's out there yeah absolutely and say so you know you know we're gonna be announcing it <laughs> yeah is, that's is interesting what i picked up on with that and so that's i mean they, they were making mars colonization posters in 2011 you could pictures of astronauts farming on mars and you know this is way before it was a hot topic like who's going first like right like elon musk or Bezos and stuff. So I definitely think there's some kind of plan in place. I don't take the perspective that it's super nefarious or really evil. I mean, I, I t t try to look at it just realistically and a little bit more empathetic sure. Sure. with a little bit more empathy, because I'm just thinking it from a national security perspective. How on earth are you going <laughs> to just show alien tech? I don't know how you can do that um, the right way. I, I don't know how, how you can do that. And I don't know how they could have ever done that. Right. Even, I guess it would depend yeah. the tech too, maybe. Right. right. Like what kind of tech is, is it something that would scare people? Is it something that would be so terrifying that wouldn't understand so that the questions that it, uh, would, would create, would create far more, right. Chaos than keeping people in the dark and then not right. questioning whether it's true or not. Right. Like that creates a little bit of whatever, but that's just more frustration. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we pull the curtain back and it scares the living shit out of everyone, well, fuck, we can't pull the curtain back anymore. Right. Or we can't Russia close it. sees something in the video. Or Russia. Yeah, and you're right. Reverse I, I mean, think sure. about how paranoid you probably are if you're working on an intelligence 
committee and you're you're working for you know sure. for national security you're gonna be so much more paranoid we're just like oh, i just want to see the bodies i just yeah wanna yeah see these things. i mean um, that makes a lot of sense if, if we're being real right like if we're being real about the situation that that absolutely um makes a lot of sense i guess the question becomes do we actually have something to disclose right do we and is yep. it only america right how are mm -hmm. we so yeah, I know we love to think America's the greatest. It's like, oh yeah, we, you know, people joke, right? Oh, Jesus was was born in St. Louis, right? He's from the Midwest. <laughs> it's like that's Americans, right? Like, yeah, we think no, aliens landed here first. It was mm -hmm. on our soil. No, we yeah. have the technology. You know, how much of that is our whatever? And you know, there's far more land mm -hmm. and far more planet outside of America than <laughs> yeah. America, unfortunately. So the odds would be that it wouldn't have landed here, right? Mm -hmm. That That is that's prob probability, but that doesn't mean there couldn't have been multiple crash, multiple landings, right? That, so it's spread out and blah, blah, and multiple species mm -hmm. and all these different things that you, you mentioned. Um, so yeah, it is, it is crazy to think about. Um, yeah, I'm along for the ride. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be honest, I, I am along for the ride. I am focusing on these UFO hearings. I don't think there is bad as some people are saying it's like hey we're starting something at least mm -hmm. it's something public i think it's cool it's fun yes absolutely it's funny it's Man, a little funny it's, you know to see i'm sure these... for people like yourself absolutely it's, it's like they're like talking the, about the stuff boomers. that's so old yeah yeah it's like well whoa, whoa, whoa. did a... they just really bring that up come well, on we're know, way past that i don't know if you <laughs> saw them breaking down that one ufo video though which just was an interesting video but they didn't they you know weren't able to prepare it they did, couldn't figure out sure. how to to show it they kept missing yeah, it yeah. and fast forwarding so that part of me is it's funny you know it's, it's sure. funny uh, but yeah i don't think it's a bad thing and these are the people you think thing. are hiding alien technology right, exactly yeah i and i don't i thought those they were sincere i really do feel that most people are sincere um and even lou elizondo i've never felt he wasn't a believer i actually always felt he believed in this um, i think he believes in a lot of other yeah, things that I, he's I, not being I think honest he about believes in a lot of stuff so i don't think it's from a not wanting to know the yeah, truth. Yeah, I, I agree do with think that. we all like are in that boat of wanting to know the truth, but we just certain people have been briefed on things and they're holding more cards. And so sure. when they're only showing you one card, the one card yeah. that they get to to show you, that's just that's just the reality is that you're just you're you're not it's not a fair game. That's a great point. You're you are where you are on the ladder. Right. Yeah, it's just, just it's it what, what it is. is. <laughs> it is what it is. But I mean, it's also okay. Point. Like I, I, sure. I like I, I'm okay with not having you know having just my uh you know my my fans who are really supportive and um I get to do interviews like this and it I. I actually like, you know, not having to be on these inner circles with these people and being able to have like an objective point of yes, view. I, I like that I don't I can I say whatever I want. I every sighting that I post yes. is, go you guys can, you know, you can look at the website and it's all transparent. You can tell me yeah. you think something's an alien or not and it's not going to hurt my feelings. Sure. So I I much prefer to be in that world. And I don't know that I really, I mean, I don't envy people who are tasked with talking about this officially on behalf of the government, because you can't, even if you wanted to, you couldn't say everything you really thought. That's so true. So I, I empathize with that. And that's true. Um, yeah, just it's probably it a lot of things, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's probably a lot of truths, right? It's probably oh, yeah. a lot of things happen. Yes. It's like, it's not this, it's not, that. it's everything. It's like, it's mm -hmm. a little bit of this. It's like a recipe. Okay. I'm a chef, right? I come from the yeah. chef world. It's, it's, it's just a recipe, right? It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. It's like, mm -hmm. it's a lot of things. Yeah. You know, you got, you know why? Because it involves human beings mm -hmm. and we're, and we're complicated people. Right. And we have, uh, right. There's, there's the truth and then there's the truth we think. It's yes. like, and then mm -hmm. there's the truth we think that person thinks, right? It's like, it right. goes forever. It, mm -hmm. It's like this. And then there's the truth we think that that person mm -hmm. thinks about that person. Oh my God, now we can go forever, right? That's yeah, what separates us from birds. Yeah. That's the bird theory, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what they think. They say a bird can't uh, think that, right? He can't think, oh, what does that bird ah. think about that bird? A bird can't do that. But they can think, uh, what do I think about that bird, right? They can say, I hate that bird. But they can't say, I wonder if that bird hates that bird. You know, so I've, 
I've been no, going. That's it. But humans, we can't. We're the only animals that can do it's that. It's too bad this is not a bird interview because I, <laughs> I I recently downloaded. A, I uh, I saw that app. in the interview. I saw that in the interview. I've been, like, yes. I've been pretty obsessed. I've learned like new things about them all the time. Like there's this one bird. It's a brown headed cow cowbird. Everybody should know this. It's here in Texas, and it goes and it lays its put it, it puts its own eggs in other birds' nests. And the other birds have to raise their eggs. <laughs> what? And sometimes it will kick out some of the eggs so that it's like the right weight. You know? um, and it won't raise any of its eggs, any of its babies. Wow. It just pawns its babies off onto other This is crazy. Nests. This is, that's just one, you know, one bird that was coming up on my ID app. So it's called Merlin ID. You can go put it That's up cool. at the sky and hear a song and hear their bird song and figure it out. But what it's a great very fun it, fact, by the way. Well, it makes Thank you, you think about. Um, it really makes you think about aliens, though, and how like how complex this like our own planet is here, right? And how sure. complex our own just this this one group, you know, this one species, you know. Our dynamic, how, you mean, like how yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, and, totally. and then the language of birds is um, totally fascinating to me. I didn't realize, you know, how intricate it was and how crazy. And so it's like, wow, what are we missing, you know, out there in the cosmos? Because this is, you know, I'm more than 30 years. Well, more than, well, well, more than 30, more. <laughs> I'm trying to be generous. But let's just say <laughs> I'm not that young. I'm not that young. Okay? Listen, I'm 42, <laughs> Jane. You're fine. I'm I'm I'm, I'm the old bastard here. 35. Let's just say yeah. that. And so, how <laughs> could I just now find out about how cool birds are? So we're just scratching the surface here. So yes, I do think there's something to this. I do think it's incredible. And the big thing is, though, is I think that we're all entitled to think about it. And any one of us could see a UFO in the sky. It requires no clearance, requires, you know, you don't have to know somebody. You don't have to be working for the government. Great point. Right. So yeah, great point. people should remember that, that this is actually, I think, over the heads of yes. these folks is really what my conclusion is. I think I used to think that there was some there had to be some group <laughs> that was in the know and, and had sure. all this information and i do think that there are groups do you think sure. there are multiple groups that believe that they know more than other groups sure. that is what i have i concluded thank you for saying that <laughs> honestly thank you for saying that because that's kind of honestly for me that's kind of eye-opening i haven't heard anybody say that in these interviews that i've watched i watched a ton of them um <laughs> That's a great point. That really is because that kind of makes it all worth it, you know, to, to be honest. Um, so, yes, thank you for, yeah. for saying that. It's worth the search. Yeah, people are yes. people haven't figured this out. Yes, so it's, yeah, they're it's not so special, it. right? Like, oh, my God, they, they have some. You know what it is? I heard, uh, have you ever heard of Christopher Hitchens? Have you ever heard of yeah, that guy? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I'm a, yeah, yeah. I'm a huge Christopher mm -hmm. Hitchens yeah. fan. Um, mm -hmm. And he used to say this thing like um uh oh gosh i'm forgetting it um oh no what did he used to say okay i can't remember oh my book. gosh oh <laughs> no oh what was it um what were we talking about we were talking about uh like a, a insider knowledge or kind of just that conspiracy oh, that yes, there's like okay. one yeah this is he would say uh to someone, he used to do these religious debates, right? That he was very famous for that later in his life. Um, and he would say to anybody, right? Like, you have the same information I do. Mm -hmm. So for you to say definitively, there is a God, you can't say that to me. You have the same data evidence I do. And it's mm -hmm. the same scenario here in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's like, yes, okay, maybe there is some people with some info, but at the, at the, the reality is we're probably more all on the same on the same starting line than so. we think. I think so. Um, which is cool um, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It feels like we can group together and and just have the real conversations, like you said, which is I, look, I, I, yeah. I, I don't want to keep you any longer, but I, I have to bring up this last thing before we oh, go yeah. of the thing you mentioned in this interview. So I'm going to I'm going mm -hmm. to uh, 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 get your memory, uh, you know, uh, what was the term? I don't know. Recollect your memory. Here. Yeah. <laughs> um, refresh your memory. There we go. Um, 
So you said, and they cut you off because I wanted to hear you talk more about it. You said you held up this and you go, I, why don't, maybe aliens are going to come through the phones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, that may sound whatever, but for about a year now, I've been having these conversations with my friends about something that I call like digital aliens that I think, mm -hmm. because I was like, you know, it'd be a great movie. They always have the movies, the aliens come in ships. And I said, man, if aliens are coming, they're not coming in ships, physical ships, in my opinion, they're coming digitally. They're coming yeah. like lightning bolts. They're coming as information. They're going to be like scrolling through. You're not going to see them. They're going to be yeah, like right? in your, in your data flying mm -hmm. through the, you know, signals and stuff. That's, that to me is where, an intelligent species would progress, right? They'd say the body, this is, this is so 20 years ago, you know, like mm -hmm. 2 billion years ago, forget bodies. We live in another world. We yeah. live in a digital world, right? It's like, well, we can't see that world, right? I think, okay, in, in society, no, I'm gonna jump around here, but yeah, okay. I love it. <laughs> in the world, right? We at one point thought the earth was the center, right? We thought it was flat. We thought a lot of things. We thought, I, I've been, I used to live in Spain, and I've been to somewhere in Spain called Finisterra, which means the end of the earth. And at oh. the time, it's on the Atlantic Ocean. And at the time in Europe, that was considered the end of the earth. They mm -hmm. would walk to the beach and that was it. They thought, if you go out to the ocean, that's it, guys. This is literally where Christopher Columbus, everyone sailed off from, this oh, area. Oh. So... It's funny, right? Like at that point, they thought that was the finish line. Of course, we yeah. come to find out it's not. They right. were able to sail, find more land. We realize it's it's uh, round. We realize we're not the center of the universe. There's other planets flying around a sun, mm -hmm. right? Basically, what I'm getting at is our reality expands and changes what we think of our reality every so often, right? Mm -hmm. So what is that next reveal? Could it be? that it is something we haven't even thought of, which is digital. It's a world we can't see, right? It's a world you have to get to a much different way. You know, there could be this whole other way to live that has nothing to do with the physical matter mm -hmm. in that sense, right? It's like, why couldn't it be that way? Like, uh, yes, simulation theory and all that, but beyond simulation theory, like, beings get so advanced they stop becoming physical beings mm -hmm. there are there are no structures there are no energy sources they're not trying to you know uh get the energy of the sun they're not they're not around mm -hmm. they they move on to another plane of existence right and we're stuck in this right we're like why where is all the life why is it not flying around right well, Life, when it can get to that point, it decides, why would I do that? <laughs> Traveling is too hard. So let's create a world that we're going to dump ourselves into, and that's the end of it. I don't know. Again, I'm theorizing it. Mm -hmm. But when you said that with the phones, like, yes, they're going to come to the phones to me. I was like, that's how I think aliens would come. I don't think it would be physical. I could be wrong, right? I'm just no, theorizing. I think, you're I, I think you're really on to something. I've had a I similar, I've, I mean, I've had definitely had the same thought experiment where it's like, what could happen could there be a mass sighting like another phoenix lights incident right or maybe another roswell but this time it's not a cover story right right but i think that you are onto something and i think you want to know it could be already happening so Tell are you me, i mean you're familiar with artificial intelligence right so um I do have a background in marketing. And so I understand uh, Google and how to rank on Google. And I understand how Google works. And artificial intelligence is in every single Google search that you do. And it used to be a very small, you know, um, actually Google bought an, art an artificial intelligence company, I think I want to say like years and years and years ago. Oh, wow. So they've okay. been they've been in the game. Yeah forever. Um, so now though, it's so ramped up. So the AI is everywhere i mean you guys see it um when you're texting or typing and you misspell and it spells it guesses what you're saying personally like yeah. it pulls a name right that a name of somebody you're talking to with friends right it's personal right so or the gmail where it's just like finishing your sentences right so artificial intelligence is this thing that we've created that is almost alien right in the sense that it just keeps going and going like outside of us right so think about like every i want to say pe wake up people's machines but you might have a machine in your home that uh, maybe 
<laughs> you, you know, I don't want to say it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, well, I can say Google Home. I'm not, I'm not triggering it. <laughs> um, but let's say you have one in your home. So let's say there's one in X amount of homes. So every time you ask a question that doesn't get an answer, that gets fed into a database of answers that are needed, right? So this is happening on real time, like, thousands and thousands of times right at once, right? That it's learning in every single home in America right now. I do not believe that we are seeing the results yet actually in our devices. I think it's a sleeping giant. AI is about to wake up in a way that oh, like, man. we're we are ready. I, I think we think we I are ready. It. Like you got the metaverse. Sure. Now, what is AI influenced by? <laughs> What is AI? It is not the single inventor per human being that creates the artificial intelligence. It is kind of this living organism in the way like hive mind. And sure. so it's influenced by us. What are we influenced by? If aliens are influencing us, if aliens have already mastered artificial intelligence and robotics and technology, how easy is it for the aliens to hack into all exactly. of our algorithms? And could they already have? It's so. Yes, it probably it's possible. <laughs> it, it's it, it, possible. It, you know, it's definitely possible. Uh, maybe they're. Just that sounds more nice, likely. Right? Honestly, that sounds more likely than dropping a spaceship on you know, whatever, and coming out like, "Hey, yep. what's up?" That, that, that may, just doesn't seem real never, to me. Yeah, you may never even announce yourself, but it might be a way that Absolutely. you're influencing, yeah. and you get this planet to go how you want it to go. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So. I think it could go different. I think if there are advanced, you know, aliens out there, and if I say that because it still is an if to me, it really is. Um, but if if they're out there and, and they're interacting, um, I think there's different different possibilities of how it could play out. I don't think there's just like this one. Uh, that's one a great point. Th you know, thing, and that it, it could just based on how we are how sure. we react to everything, how government handles things, it can adjust and change. And so I think we should just all be good and <laughs> behave and, and not stop talking to each other. We need to all keep talking to each other and be nice to each other because all that's all we ultimately can be sure of is, you know, our human connections and we may never find out the truth. Perfect. Right. So great way to set it. That's a great yeah. way to set. Like, that's all you can count on is each other. Right. To like, mm -hmm. and having each other's backs, having these conversations uh, about this serious stuff. Yeah. That's perfect. Man, have you ever that's played in a chess game with an AI, like AI chess? It's scary. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I you're need right. the humans on my side. <laughs> Listen, you're right about the AI and it's that and challenging. That, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that makes sense, right? Like if 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 we're already creating AI, hello, right? What is AI to a, a, a species or a civilization that's been around X times, mm -hmm. right? It, that's so advanced. Of course, it could have taken over. Yeah. Could it could be the species, right? Who's could to say AI isn't isn't just as much life as we are? Mm -hmm. Right. If nobody created us, right. If we just came out of a little bacteria and then that turned into the right to blah, blah, evolution, right? Okay, mm -hmm. great. So who's to say AI isn't that what we created it? Well, what's the difference? And it grows right. and it grows and it becomes a life being. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. What then becomes the difference, right? Well, what then becomes alien? What then yeah. becomes out of this earth? Right. What does that mm -hmm. mean? It is. Can the AI be that because it wasn't in the sense on earth first, we, we yeah. made it on earth, you know, it's like, it's, it, it opens a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. It opens a lot of topics. Right. Um, and this is kind of where I want to just, you know, sort of summarize here mm -hmm. um, at the end uh, for everybody, you know, I don't want to scare people away on the topic. I didn't want people to be like, Oh my God. Okay. Patrick, you're just talking about these people are lying and doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I just want people to know that, you know, go in with, an open mind, but go in like, okay, let me check things out. You know, don't believe everything you hear. No. Right. And don't trust everything. Um, just do your research, find the people you genuinely are attracted to how they present these mm -hmm. discussions and topics and, and get involved if you want. Right. And, and do what you can, um, as far as that goes. And if you're just interested in learning, I think it was just important to, you know, know what you're learning. And know yeah. if that's something you want to have, because I am about having facts and um, 
you know, the truth behind me when I speak about something. So to know that some things that I'm going to say to somebody aren't may or may not be true. I don't want to say yeah. it like that. Right. I want to know what I'm, I'm set because now that that burns my credibility. Mm -hmm. Right. For somebody to be like, well, you told me this before, dude, and that turned out yeah. to be total horse shit. So I don't trust anything you say now. OK, you're right. Let, let's 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 come at this. Right. And, and, and we take the show very seriously. We don't want to just yeah. throw out all this stuff about, um, you know, whatever. Basically, what I'm saying is make up your own mind. Go mm -hmm. check things out. Make up your own mind about all these people um, and get involved however you want, right? Um, as far as that goes, I, I don't really know what else. Um, yeah, I mean, I think try, try to debunk things. You know, that's something, um, you know, like go take pictures of stars. They look weird. Like go take a picture of a star, zoom in on your phone. It's going to look weird. And um, it's it just, you know, get used to I would, I would, I do think this is a valuable thing to start understanding sooner than later because I do not think it's going to go away. It's going to, it's going to keep being new stories about it. I do think it's going to be building. We might very well, well be building toward headlines that aliens are visiting. And I don't know how much truth there's going to be right to those headlines. And so it's wow. really important for, yes, I think educate yourself, read old, you have, read old his read the old UFO books now. <laughs> Um, if you haven't, look, pay attention to the sky, try to debunk things so that you don't fall for a trick, okay? Uh, nice. Because when I first saw Chinese lanterns, let's just say this, when I first got into this world and I saw Chinese lanterns, I was like, aliens are invading because it looked crazy. It was a sure. bunch of strange orange, orange lights dancing and floating in the sky. And so you need to kind of get used to seeing weird lights. So you're not just floored and like, oh, that's an alien. You know, every time you see something Great with point. a cool, cool music under it, right? Or, or a good presentation. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they get you with the music. They right? do. Like... And hey, I love putting in music too. I have no <laughs> shame. You know, you, you, sure. you want to make an entertainment entertaining. I'm right there. I have I regularly blog about UFOs. I'm like, are aliens here? I, I love, I think it's fun. But I do also offer up my possible explanations. And I, that's what I'm trying to do ultimately is explain it. Um, and then you're left over with that, you know, that group you can't explain. And it's fun. Um, but it, it's, it's okay to debunk sightings and, and be a debunker per se on your search for the truth. It doesn't mean... Um, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Of course. I mean, a hundred percent. Um, okay. Look, uh, before we go, I'm going to literally for people, this may be crazy or not. I don't know, but I'm just going to fire off everything I okay. wrote. And I'm going to say to people, Google these terms. It'd be really easy. Yeah, we this, this we, will, this will we got you. real. That's the only thing is like with, um, folks listening. I feel like we got real deep in the, we got a deep, we got stuff. deep. So we, we might have lost you. And we we so probably we did lose a few people. I don't normally get Trust that me. deep on a show like this. I I, I probably should have. Um, Listen, I went deep. I care. I care about it. I, I mean, that's the truth. You knew, I could tell you could. Yeah, you you get it. You're yeah. You're totally in the know. So, um, but yeah, it it yeah. Look up look up the names. Look up you know. Look up Cash Landrum incident. Um, 1897 Aurora, Texas UFO crash. Lubbock Lights of 1951. Those are some great Texas UFO cases. Thank you. Will yeah, give yeah, you, for sure. Give you a feel for the history of the phenomenon. You can keep that in your back pocket in your mind as you're looking at the current government leaks. <laughs> yeah, the current government. That's true. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to fire off all these terms. If you want to Google them, that's what I recommend. Stephen Grease Street, Lou Elizondo, Chris Mellon, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, Bob Lazar, James Lukatsky, Nick Pope, Joe Rogan, Tom DeLong, Senator Harry Reid, Robert Bigelow, Tim McMillan, Mick West, Commander David Fravor, Sean Cahill, Eric Davis, Admiral Wilson, Bass, Skinwalker Ranch, OSAP, ATIP, Pentagon, Private Industry, Department of Energy, Wilson Document, Black Money, $22 million, Ghouls, Ghosts, Bigfoot, Werewolves, Roswell, Tic Tac, UFO, UAP, UAV, Flying Disc, Flying Saucer, Triangle, Cigar Shape, Orb, 
green, red, orange, white, right? All kinds. Uh, a lot of different Nailed terms it. to sort of search. <laughs> I'm sure there's more. I know there's more. I know that's just off the top of my head. Literally, that was just off I, the top of my I head. I find out about new UFO cases all the time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is well documented. There was a pilot. There was all this. How did I not know about this? How did I not that's know? Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, wow. It really is. Yeah. Even you get uh, surprised. Oh, Texas, usually I, I know a lot of the cases here. But yeah, outside of Texas. Yeah, all like if you just go on Reddit, there's like UFO Reddit and all these great Reddits and they'll just pop up these cases like from his yesteryear from history yeah. that just got lost i think you uh you know in the in the muck of it because there's so much yeah i think your your point about bringing up history d throughout this conversation is is great and i and i do want to focus on that too i think people need to start there and i think you're right about that so okay so the last question i'll, I'll ask you is yeah. if let's say an alien ship came right and it came out and it said okay jane um you can come back with us and we'll uh, tell you everything about mm -hmm. everything. Uh, but you don't get to come back. Would you go? I would I would see if I could Instagram story all that entire communication. I would try to go live during it. But no, I wouldn't go. <laughs> I wouldn't go because now it, I'm a mom. So if I wasn't a mom... I'm, I'm trying to get back in like that brain space. Okay, well, let's assume maybe both. if I wasn't okay, like maybe if I wasn't a mom. Or, okay, let's just say I'm single because it's hard. If you've got fit, if got, I mean, I got the husband and the kid. I can't leave them. Let's say it was pre kid and sure. Maybe my guy gets to go with me, you. or I'm alone. It's just me. That I feel like maybe I'll go. Maybe I go. What if you get maybe to take I your would, family, would. right? So it sounds like you want to go. You just I feel need like it'd be right too thing. dangerous. I think if I, I think oh, interesting. I, I don't trust the alien. I don't trust any okay. alien that's going to tell me what the truth is. They're lying to me. Wow, I love. But this I want to know what the lie I gotta, is. I got to. I got to. I'm going to go in. Answer. I'm going to go in guessing they're lying to me. Wow. Because um, I don't okay. think any, and, and I would assume that any are smart government intelligence people. If they're talking to aliens, they're also assuming the aliens are lying to them. Because guess what? We're going to lie to them. That's what we do. We, we spies within spies, right? Yeah. So I don't trust. Yeah, I don't trust that alien. But I'm curious, and I want. I want to. I want to go along for the ride. I want to like look at their spaceship. I want to see what they You're look like. Let like, me see a brochure a first, hey. right? Yeah. yeah I, I want. I'm curious <laughs> what they're going to tell me. Sure. Uh, of course, I mean, of course, I want to go, but I don't have, I don't have that naivety. I think that I have seen, I don't know, naivety. Some people have just had experiences, and they just sure. like know it's positive, and they know the aliens are good, or they almost think of them as like angelic, right? So I don't have sure. that. I don't have that kind of feeling. I also don't think that they're. I also don't like think, oh, there must be just super evil and horrible either. I just think it's probably, probably like. You and me, and if if they're coming down to tell me like the the truth about the universe, something's off. Something's off. <laughs> that's um, a great point, actually. Uh, I gotta say, that's a great point. Yeah, like why? This is weird. Why yeah, are you, why you offering want, are you, it to me? Why do you want me to go tell everybody else? <laughs> yeah, you know, like that's a good point. So I'm that's probably, funny. Yeah. So that that's just, I guess. Um, Maybe I have an issue with authority figures or something. Like no, that. I like this but answer. It's, like, you, it's real. You can't. Yeah. So, um, but I, I don't know if I'll ever get that opportunity, but I definitely plan to be transparent if that ever happens and go live right away. <laughs> so Please. I don't end up having to sign anything. Right. So Please. they can't talk yes. about it because that would be oh, a shame. Gosh. So. I will trust you. I got to say, uh, I would trust uh, you if you came out and yeah. said, I think I wouldn't be reporting on UFOs. I think if I just stopped doing everything one day, you guys can assume maybe the men. That's a great point. Because I don't what think are, they what are they not lie saying about it? Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. So if you drop off the map, we know what happened. <laughs> the Aliens men in black are real. Me. Yeah, yeah, the men. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're gone. Yeah, because I'm not. Okay. I'm not gonna put my like men in black. If you're listening, all you have to do is just lightly tell me, to <laughs> just just gently discourage me, and I'm off the trail. Like no. I would worries, say uh, so. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, men in black. I I am. You could hire me. I'm looking to come on. Go. I got part time job. I can work holidays. <laughs> maybe uh, that's probably where to learn the most. If you don't right? have a black. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. Well, look, Jane, this has been just 
honestly, I can't tell you the last time I had this much fun doing a podcast, oh, yeah. if I'm being honest. Um, I love this topic so much. It's near dear to my heart. It, although I may have sound a little skeptical uh, during okay. the show, the, the truth is, is, is yeah. I'm open about mm -hmm. it. Uh, that, that is the truth. Um, so, yes, I just really appreciate, um, yeah, you allowing us to have this discussion and talk and just kind of go places and, and discuss things. I, I really appreciate your insight and... Yeah, this was awesome. I mean, really, yeah, this, this is a blast. Yeah, um, and again to the audience, if if we did lose you, um, yeah, just just go up, look up UFOs in Texas, and you know you'll <laughs> listen. You'll we should do a part two of this um, <laughs> later on down the road. I think we should re revisit again. Okay, um, I'm down. Right, because I think there'll be feedback from this, but also just new things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. well, there'll be more hearings. There definitely yes. will be. So yes, yes. We'll more Gosh. to discuss. Thank you so much. Look, uh, great you. job Thank on all the interviews you do out there. This. And yeah, yeah. Listen, you do a great job on all the stuff. I, I, I'll be watching and uh, paying attention. Um, you work with some really cool people and do some great things and have some great conversations. So uh, for those of us that are out there listening, is fan. I'm also a fan, I'm not oh. just a podcaster. I'm also a fan. Um, mm. So yes, um, yeah. Keep doing your thing. You're rocking it. Um, this was amazing. So thank you for taking the time. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah. Anytime. All right. Awesome, happy, Jane. Well, listen. Happy rest yes. of your, your night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> happy Memorial Day. Absolutely. Yeah, have a good holiday. One. All right. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Talk soon. Bye. listening to the Lone Star Play podcast with your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. For more info, go to lonestarplay.show.